That's right, I'm finally taking the plunge. What's up guys, it's Davy J again, back with another classic PS1 game review and retrospective. And today, ho ho, today we're taking on the big one. One of the all-time legends, a name so big it's well known even outside of gaming circles. Yep, today we're looking at Grand Theft Auto, GTA. Scourge of pearl clutching helicopter parents, dishonest journalists and disgraced former lawyers. And more importantly, the progenitor for the modern 3D open world free roaming game. But even though today it's one of the most beloved franchises in gaming and literally the most profitable entertainment product of all time, yeah, not just in gaming, everywhere, it actually had a pretty humble beginning with the first couple titles in the series. And in truth, not a lot of people have played them, at least compared to the later entries, including myself. Yeah, again, I came in at GTA 3, which, yeah, there's a whole story behind that that maybe I'll share with you guys someday. But for now, how does the first title in one of the most goated series in video games hold up to date? Well, let's steal us some cars, pick ourselves up some hookers just so we can murder them for our money back, <laughs> and find out. So Grand Theft Auto, or as it would have been called if it was set in the UK, Twokane was developed by DMA Design, better known as Rockstar North as they would go on to be called, and published by Take-Two Interactive in North America and BMG Interactive in Europe in the year of our Lord, 1997. Yeah, I'd wager my left testicle that half of GTA 5's player base weren't even swimming around in their daddy's ball sack when this came out. But even though the name may be different, the spirit of the rock star that we all know and love is still very much there. Yeah, this is rock star through and through. So we come to the main menu, select new game. Man, listen to this music. You can tell this was made in the 90s, can't you? And then we actually get to choose a character to play as. We've got Travis here, kind of looking like the Green Lantern after having spent a few too many hours on the sunbeds. Bubba, uh, oh, that's a bit creepy, um kind of giving off some uh, white EDP vibes if I'm being totally honest. I don't like the look of him. Then we've got Troy. <laughs> kind of looks a bit like Luis from the Ballad of Gear Tony, don't you think? And then, um, Gollum. My precious. Yeah, I think we'll go with Troy. He looks pretty cool. Although it really doesn't matter who you choose since it has no effect on the story or gameplay whatsoever. I mean, this is what you look like in game. Yeah, the resemblance is striking, don't you think? Oh, and you can also put your own name in if you want. And I just need to make sure, uh, yep, nine letters. That's what I like to see. See, now that's why Rockstar's always been on top. And then it's on to, oh yeah, Liberty City. Now there's a name that's dear to my heart. Fuck me, I know these cities better than my own hometown. Alright, so now we can finally get into the main game. And, uh, yeah, what was I saying about humble beginnings? I mean, how many kids today do you think would believe it if you told them this would eventually become this? But anyway, how do I move? I can't move. Oh, wait, there we go. So, uh, yeah, you know the driving controls in the later games? You know, one button for accelerate, another for brake and reverse? Well, uh, yeah, it seems here they decide to apply that to the on-foot movement as well. Because, uh, why? Why did that need to be a thing? Why couldn't we just use the directional buttons to move around? Like pretty much every other game that's ever been made. So yeah, to move, you've got to hold down X and then use the stick or D-pad to go in the direction you want. And I don't mean hold down X just to move any faster than a walk, like what the keep insisted on doing in all their modern titles just for some reason. No, I mean to move at all. Yeah, under normal circumstances, I'd say that's completely backwards, but, uh, well, you know. But anyway, now that we've figured out how to move, it's time to begin our ascent through the Liberty City underworld. And we actually don't have far to go to do that. In fact, we just have to come over here to these payphones where we can get some jobs from the local ne'er-do-wells. Because apparently it was a common practice in the 90s for criminals to just ring random payphones and offer jobs to any old fucker what answered. And I thought the crooks in Driver were dumb as fuck. Man, why do we get rid of payphones? The FBI would be having a failed day with that shit. So yeah, all you've got to do is go to a payphone to get a job and then you do it. If only it was that easy in real life. They all ring at the same time, so you can do them in any order you want. And in addition to that, you'll also find other jobs throughout the city if you know where to look for them. 
Alright, so we've got our first job where we need to pick up a car what some Jimmy guys left or die. A bit extreme if you ask me, but whatever. But in order to get to the car, we first need to get some wheels of our own. And how do we do that? My friend, if you have to ask a question like that in a game called Grand Theft Auto, then quite frankly, there's nothing I can do for you. So yeah, as with all later entries in the series, you see a vehicle you like, you just walk on up to that bad boy, press the button to haul the pussy ass bitch behind the wheel out of there, and then you just take off, and whoa, whoa, oh boy, okay, um, that's weird, that's probably gonna take a bit getting used to. But anyway, you just follow the arrow to your objective, where you pick up the car, which you then have to bring to this place, and there you go. Is that the end of the mission? Nope, now we've got to go and answer a payphone to talk to this Jimmy character. Uh, Okay, whatever. So now we just have to head over there and, uh, whoa, wait a minute, what do you mean time left? I didn't know I was being timed, what the fuck? So yeah, turns out you've actually got to leg it over to the payphone before the time runs out, otherwise you'll fail the mission. Yeah, thanks, you think you could have told me that from the start? Well, you're then told to pick up a taxi and bring it to the bank to pick the guy up. Jesus, this just keeps on going. So then you pick up the taxi, take it over to the bank where the guy's waiting after he's just robbed it, but then, oh shit, we've got the cops on our ass. And Jesus, four wanted stars? Or actually, four angry policeman's faces? Yeah, I guess they hadn't thought of that yet. Man, imagine if they stuck with that for the rest of the series. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty silly. But anyway, you've just got to tear ass out of there and drop the guy off where he wants. And there you go, we're finally done. And thankfully, it also gets rid of your wanted level. So yeah, that's all there is to it. You get a job, you do it, you get paid. Simple as that. You've got, I guess, the main jobs from the payphones, and you'll also find random vehicles parked around the city what'll give you jobs if you get into them, which you'll learn about from messages you'll periodically get through your pager. So probably, your most burning question is, just how similar is this to the later games? And, despite looking a lot different, the answer is, surprisingly, quite a lot. In fact, pretty much the whole foundation for the series going forward was laid all the way back here. I mean, it may look a lot less impressive, and there's way less going on, but despite that, yeah, it's GTA. You can go roaming freely around the city, beat up random people, steal cars and run the fuckers over because finally a developer with some balls. And when you do that, you get a wanted level and the cops will chase you. There's radio stations that say it's wasted and busted when you get killed or arrested. Like I say, I'm honestly quite surprised by just how much I recognise from the later games. I guess, just cause it was GTA 3 that pretty much put the series on the map, I just assumed it was that game what established most of the main staples of the series. Although it wasn't until then that we could pick up hookers, so um, yeah, it's just not the same. But even though there are a lot of similarities to the later, more popular games, there are quite a few differences as well. Firstly, there's the way the game's structured and how you progress through it. So basically, the game's divided into chapters. That's what these things are here. And to move from one to the next, you first gotta reach the target score, which is basically the money you make from doing jobs and shit. But even though doing jobs is your primary method of earning money or points or whatever, you're also awarded points for doing just about anything, really. Yeah, stealing cars, blowing shit up, massacring innocents. You can see why this shit was so controversial back in the day. I mean, it's bad enough that in later games, you can just murder an innocent person and then pocket all their cash pretty much with impunity. But at least earning money from your mindless slaughter is more like a happy consequence. But here you're directly being awarded points for committing random acts of violence. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not one of these wet blanket snowflake types who think violent video games turn kids into serial killers or whatever, but you can kinda see why some people would be shocked by this kind of thing since it wasn't as well researched back then. They've even got the old Rampage missions. Oh yes, they give you tons of points. <laughs> Oh, and you can also steal and sell cars for money as well. So technically, you can get through each chapter without doing any jobs at all. But, eh, uh, you'll be gone for a long time. Considering the target in the first chapter is one million, Jesus. And it only goes up from there. But regardless of how you do it, once you reach the target score, the arrow turns red and leads you to the final location, where you'll get a cutscene. Like at the end of the first chapter, we've got to talk to, um, uh, fucking... Snork from the sequel trilogy? 
Yeah, and then it's on to the next chapter, where it's pretty much more of the same, so I guess we'll now take a deeper look at the gameplay. Starting with the vehicle handling, which, um, shit, I owe driver an apology. Yeah, I know I didn't exactly trash the driving in that game, but I did say it wasn't great, because it wasn't, but it was a hell of a lot better than what we've got here. So like in later entries, we've got a whole bunch of different vehicles to steal and go crashing around in. We've got cars, trucks, lorries, motorbikes, etc. All of which handle a bit differently, but again, none of them are that great. They're either just really slow and clunky in the case of the standard cars and trucks and shit which makes it hard to get anywhere fast, or they're too fast and sensitive in the case of the bikes and sports cars so you can barely go two feet without crashing into shit. The bikes are particularly bad because you've barely got to be going any more than a snail's pace to be thrown off when you inevitably crash into something. Yeah, it's basically just like the handling in the Action Man game, the first one, but at least there was way less shit on the road for you to crash into. Now to be fair, there are a couple vehicles that are kind of in that Goldilocks zone of being a bit heavy but not too heavy, and fast but not too fast, so you can get around relatively quickly without crashing into something every few seconds. But if you can't find one, then you kind of just have to make a choice between being slow and clunky so it's hard to get anywhere fast, which is made worse by the fact that a lot of the missions are timed, again for no other reason than to arbitrarily increase the challenge, or flying around at 100 miles an hour overshooting turns and crashing into shit practically every other second. So yeah, in short the driving just isn't very good and makes cruising around the city mostly annoying and frustrating for the same reasons I just stated, which becomes even more stressful when you've got random fucking time limits so then you're rushing around everywhere. But at least you don't have to fuck around driving responsibly to keep the cops off your back, so that's something I guess. But as we all know, despite the title, there's more to these games than just driving around and getting in car chases and shit. So what about the combat? Well, you know how in recent years, the combat in Rockstar's last few titles has been criticised for being a bit clunky and archaic? Yeah, try going back to this shit and then talk to me about fucking clunky and archaic. At least you can shoot shit in those games. But here, ho ho, not here. You'd have better luck trying to 360 no scope a fucking jackal sniper one handed while jerking off with the other with your fucking head up your ass and actually shooting someone in this shit. And what makes me say that? Well, before we can get to that, we've first got to get ourselves some firepower. And how do we do that? Do we go to ammunition or something? Well, no, because I guess the good folks over at Rockstar hadn't yet thought of that clever and totally subtle bit of commentary on American culture. Nah, instead, while on your travels around the city, you'll come across these random crates dotted about, which can be a bit difficult to spot, considering they're almost the same colour as the sidewalk, so they do blend in pretty well. But when you break or crash through them, you get various goodies like police bribes, extra lives, body armour, <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna need that. And of course, guns. And yeah, that's pretty much the only way to get weapons. I mean, the enemies don't drop them, even the ones that are armed. I have read that they do, but it never happened for me, so I don't know. And once you've got the guns, what then? Well, it's really very simple, he says while holding up air quotes. Yeah, I know you can't see me, but just imagine that I am. Yeah, you'd think it'd be easy. I mean, all you have to do is line yourself up with the target, go pew pew pew, and there you go. But no, they even managed to make that a lot easier said than done. See, it pretty much comes down to the fact that it's just really difficult and annoying to get yourself lined up with the arsehole what you're trying to fill full of lead, since the on-foot movement's pretty shit as well. Yeah, I know. Big shock. Meaning you've got to be really finicky with the controls when you're trying to turn yourself in the right direction, because even the slightest button press can turn you too far, so then you're having to fuck around trying to move yourself all over the place so you're facing the exact right angle. And you better believe me when I say you have to be right on the fucking money with this shit. Seriously, you've got to be dead fucking centre. If you're even like a nanometer off, even if the bullet touches the guy, if it's not 100% dead centre, it'll just pass right on through. And of course, while you're fucking around trying to get yourself in line, they're either running away or shooting back. So then you're having to fuck around even more. The only saving grace is that the enemies aren't that accurate either, since they also have a hard time lining themselves up with you. Although it usually just leads to shootouts that go like this. Oh. 
So yeah, the shooting in this game is just a complete lost cause, to the point where I would dread getting a job where you've got to take some guys out and would actively go out of my way to avoid combat as much as possible. But when you're left with no choice, honestly, the best thing to do instead of trying to shoot them is to just jump in a car and run the fuckers over Walter White style. When you can, since of course half the time the wankers are behind fucking bollards or whatever what you can't smash through, but even when they're not, it's still risky since it doesn't take many shots to blow you up. On remember what I was saying about the body armour? Yeah, I wasn't joking. And it's not just recommended, it's fucking essential. Why? Because you've got no health. Seriously, you get shot once and that's it. Wasted. But if you get some armor, then you can take three hits first. Which still isn't a lot, but fuck, it's a hell of a lot better than nothing. It's just a shame that finding armor in crates isn't all that common. So before any mission where I knew it was about to get hairy, I would spend ages driving round and round the city looking for crates to smash. Most of which, of course, had just about everything except the thing that I actually wanted. And once you smash a crate, that's it. It doesn't come back. So if you lose your armor and need more, then you've got to go even further to find it. And let's talk about what happens when you get wasted. Because yeah, this is a load of bullshit too. Basically, it's mostly the same as in the later games. You get killed or arrested and you respawn outside the hospital or police station with your weapons and armor gone, as well as a bit of your money. Whatever, that's fine. But then look up here, what are these numbers? Well, one of them's a point multiplier. Basically, the higher that number is, the more points or money you get for doing shit. You increase your point multiplier by completing jobs and you can also find them in some of the crates. So that's cool, but what about this one? Well, that's your lives. Lives? In GTA? You've gotta be kidding me. Nope, you get killed enough times, which as we've already seen, ain't all that hard to do. Then it's game over and you've gotta start the whole chapter again. So yeah, that's just great, isn't it? I mean, the game's already annoying enough to begin with, so why do you have to pile even more bullshit on top? Now, it may sound like I'm starting to get a bit negative towards this game, and, mate, I'm just getting fucking started. Cause oh boy, does this game have problems, in addition to the ones I've already mentioned. Which to be honest, doesn't come as much of a surprise, considering it is the first title in the series, but that doesn't make it any less fucking annoying. What am I talking about? Well, first up, we've got the top-down camera, which, yeah, pretty much causes the same problems that we've seen in games with similar setups. Namely, that you can only see so far ahead. So you can be speeding along and go around a corner, but you can't see whether or not you're about to hit a dead end, which most of the time you are. But it's even worse here, since a lot of the time you'll be driving so fast that as you're going along, you'll just have vehicles appearing on screen so suddenly that it's hard to react in time. So again, you can barely go a few feet without crashing into shit. And yeah, the camera does zoom out as you gain speed to let you see a bit further ahead. But one, that doesn't really help all that much since it's still easy to crash. And two, it's pretty hard to keep yourself going at consistent speed. What with your braking all the time to go around corners or manoeuvre around other vehicles. Virtually every moment you're going from slow to fast to slow again, meaning that the camera's constantly zooming in and out. And it's just really disorientating to look at. And on top of that, you've also got all the times where you're going to shit like bridges and the like and you can't see yourself anymore. And yeah, you've got an arrow to tell you which way you're facing, but you still can't see all the other shit under there, like other vehicles and what have you. So you can just be crashing into shit, but you can't see what you're hitting, so it's a ball ache to move around it. And you can't see what else you might be about to crash into as well. So yeah, the top-down camera does neither you nor the game any favours. And I'm not saying that they should have made it full-on over the shoulder like in the later games. I'm not really sure how good that would have looked with these graphics. But maybe if they just tilted the camera down a bit so you can see a bit further in front of you. Like how it is in Croc or The Phantom Menace or hell, Action Man Destruction X. That would have been way better. Oh, and you can't save the game. Well, you can, but it only really works sometimes. What do I mean? Well here, get a load of this shit. Let's say you're about halfway through a chapter, like Gangster Bang here. Yeah, what was I saying about this in the 90s? You've done a bunch of jobs and are about halfway to the target score, but then, I don't know, you got busted or wasted one too many times, so you're like, fuck it, I can't be asked anymore. I'll call it a day and come back later. So you quit the game and it brings up your score and your criminal record and shit. Uh, already I don't like the look of this. But whatever, you're given the option to save. But here's the thing, when you do, it only saves your score, not your progress. 
The next time you load the chapter, the whole thing's been reset. You're back to zero and you've got to do it all again. You can only save your progress when moving from one chapter to the next. So basically, you've got to get through each chapter in one sitting. You quit halfway through and like I say, it just logs your score and nothing else. And these chapters are long. Seriously, I mean in the first one, you've got to get a million points. Fuck me, and it only goes up from there. You've got the jobs that are actually multiple jobs in one, so they just keep on going. Then you've got the shitty vehicle handling making you crash every few seconds. And the fact that it's hard to find your way around. Oh, don't worry, we'll get to that. And it just takes way longer than you'd ever expect. I mean, for me, each chapter took over an hour. I'm not kidding, and maybe it's just cause I'm new to the game and not very good at it, but it's still completely unreasonable to expect someone to sit here and get through all this shit in one go with only a couple lives, and not be allowed to save halfway through so you can come back later. It's up there with the bullshit what Crash Bandicoot pulled. Remember that? Cause I sure as fuck do. Yeah, sometimes I miss the days of classic gaming, and sometimes I really fucking don't. But then we'll come to the thing what I hate most about this game. Yeah, I told you we'd get to it. You remember how in the older games, in addition to the manual that also gave you a full-sized physical map of the world that you'd then stick up on your bedroom wall? Man, that brings back memories. I don't know if they still do it, considering manuals are very much a thing of the past. But yeah, it was a cool little novelty. Just a nice little extra that added to the series' charm. But see, whereas in those games you didn't actually need the physical map cause, you know, you had things like the mini-map and the pause menu. But here, nah there's none of that shit here. No mini-map, no world map and the pause menu. Yeah, I guess we had to wait until Driver for those cutting edge innovations. So yeah, aside from the actual physical map that came with the game, which I obviously don't have cause I'm playing on a fucking emulator, there's literally no way to navigate through it. Except for the arrow, but that only points you in the general direction of your objective and doesn't take into account what turns you need to take, or dead ends, or the fact that the cities are split into islands separated by fucking rivers or seas or whatever that you can't swim across because this is before fucking San Andreas and the only way to get from one to the other is across bridges, which of course if you don't have the map you won't know where they are. So half your time driving through the fucking city is just made up of following the fucking arrow only to come to fucking water so then you're having to go further as you tear your fucking hair out looking for these fucking bridges. Now you may be thinking, well there's your problem shit for brains. You shouldn't be playing without the fucking map. You've got no one to blame but yourself, dumbass. To which I say, yeah, you're right. I brought this all on myself. I'm an idiot. But the thing is, that still doesn't completely absolve the fuckheads who thought it was a good idea. I mean, do you think it'd be any more fun sitting there with a fucking map across your knees that you're having to consult every few seconds to make sure you're going the right fucking way? It'd be annoying enough having to pause the game every few seconds to check the map. How do I know? Because that's what it was like half the time in fucking Driver. It's like I said in that video, we play games to escape from real life. So we don't have to fuck around with maps and shit when we're trying to go somewhere. You think I want to know what life was like for my day year old father back in the day every time we went on a long car journey and he lost his way so he'd have to whip out the old map boot to figure out where to go? Cause it sure didn't look like he was having fun. And before anyone says anything, no this wasn't in the days before sat nav, I'm not that fucking old. Nah my dad's just a fucking luddite. But anyway you get the point, just who thought this shit was a good idea. I mean, I know Rockstar have always been sticklers for realism. It's not like back then you could just pull out your smartphone and open Google Maps whenever you needed to find somewhere. But this is taking it way too far. And it doesn't get any better as you progress through the game either. Because when you just finally get in the lay of the land in Liberty City, you're then sent off to fucking San Andreas and later Vice City. So then you're back to square one and have a whole new city to get used to. Twice! Now I wouldn't go so far as to call the game unplayable without the map, but it certainly makes it a whole lot more of a fucking ball ache than it had to be. Just, why couldn't we have a mini map? Or the map in the pause menu? Or for the arrow to give better directions? Or anything? I mean, it's not like that shit wasn't possible technically at the time. What, could you just not be asked or something? I don't get it. So yeah, just like with Driver, I think it's become more than clear that I'm not a huge fan of the gameplay. So what about the presentation side? Again, there's gotta be something I like there. Right? The graphics, um, 
Well, I guess they're all right for the time. All right being the operative word. There were plenty of better looking games around back then. Croc, Crash Bandicoot and GoldenEye 007 to name but three. The art style's really cartoony. It's bright and colourful, which is completely at odds with the dark and gritty look of the cutscenes. I mean, if you didn't know any better, would you believe that these are from the same game? And I normally wouldn't mind it, but here it's just not really to my taste when you consider the subject matter, but I doubt it would have looked any better if they went for a more realistic style. At least the environments are pretty well detailed, even though the cities themselves don't really have that much character to them. They're meant to be based on New York, San Francisco and Miami respectively, but really, for the most part, you could tell me they were based on just about anywhere and I'd believe ya. There's no voice acting, except for in the cutscenes and the random chatter from the pedestrians. And well, um, just take a listen to some of this shit. Hey, Aruzo. I got a warning for you from bald man Sonetti. Cross him again, I'll stick a gun up your ass and blow your f***ing eyeballs out. Now it's time for you to find out why they call me the donkey, huh? <laughs> you listen to me, you two-bit mother sucker! I hear you're working behind my back. If that's true, I'm gonna f*** you like a crazy bitch. Get the f*** out of my sight. War is where the young and stupid are tricked by the old and bitter into killing each other. I was very young. I'm very angry. Yeah, it's, um, well, it's not great. Although, to be honest, I'm not really sure what more you could expect for the time. The soundtrack's just the various radio stations you listen to while on your travels. There's a decent range of genres, from electronic to country to hip-hop. Although you can't actually change the station, you're just stuck with whatever happens to be playing in whatever car you get into. And yeah, some of it's actually pretty good, like the electronic, while some of it, namely the hip-hop, is just ultra-cheesy 90s slot that you wouldn't be caught dead listening to these days. Or maybe you would. I don't know. Whatever floats your boat, I guess. So anyway, that's about all there is to it. You just go from one city to the next, doing jobs and getting paid. There is a loose story, if you can be bothered to pay attention, which to be honest, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. It makes no difference, it's no Red Dead 2 or what have you. All that happens is, you take part in a few gang wars and kill a bunch of guys, and then at the end, you just retire. And there you go. Now that's how you know this is from the rock star of old, because your character actually manages to survive. Yeah, you know what I mean, if you've played almost any of their games from over the past 10, 15 years. How much do you want to bet GTA 6 ends with one of the protagonists having to kill the other? I bet that's at least one possible ending. So yeah, that's Grand Theft Auto on PS1. And in conclusion... Jesus. Thank fucking Christ they made GTA 3. Cause if they stuck with this shit, let me tell ya. There'd be no little kiddies racing around on their fucking oppressor Mark IIs and using their parents' credit cards to buy shark cards in GTA Online. Rockstar wouldn't be one of the biggest players in the games industry, and the name Grand Theft Auto would be all but forgotten to everyone but a few lonely weirdos like myself. Yeah, this game's total shite. Honestly, it's one of the worst I've played. I had a better time with fucking Driver than I did with this shit. Technically, it's fine for the time, and it plays well enough, but it's got to be one of the most frustrating and enraging games I've ever played in my whole life. And I'm being completely serious when I say I hate it just about every second I spend playing it. The driving's not very good, the combat's completely fucked, it doesn't look or sound that great, it's repetitive, tedious, the fact there's no in-game map makes me want to throw myself into a fucking wood chipper. And in my opinion, it's just not fun to play whatsoever. Once again, the only reason I can think of for why people liked it at the time is because there was nothing else like it back then and because of all the controversy that surrounded it. That's it. So yeah, is there any way I can recommend it now? I mean, if you never managed to play it back in the day and want to experience the first title in one of the most important and beloved series in video game history, otherwise I'd just stick with GTA 5 or GTA 4 if you're one of the big boys. Yeah, overall, it was just an annoying, frustrating, and honestly unpleasant experience that I hope never to repeat ever again. But yeah, we all know what happened next. 
Despite it being a loathsome piece of shit, it still managed to sell well, again largely because of all the historical controversy that surrounded it, and DMA Design, later Rockstar North, would go on to release a sequel in 1999, and then in 2001 they changed the whole gaming landscape with GTA 3, before really striking it big with Vice City and San Andreas, and then it all just grew from there. Grand Theft Auto became one of the most popular titles in the gaming industry, caught in controversy the whole way, and now here we are. GTA 5's over 10 years old and still raking it in, GTA 6 will probably do the same when it finally gets here, and then we'll just have to wait and see what the future holds. And yeah, I'm done. Great, I just managed to get the driver fans off my back, now I've got to watch out for the GTA fanboys. Yeah, again, sorry if I just shit all over one of your all-time favourites from back in the day. Again, you probably just have a lot more patience than me. And you probably also had the map, which definitely would have helped. But anyway, thank you very much for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, then leave a like. If you didn't, then tell me to go fuck myself. Fuck yourself. We're trying to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of the year and we're making good progress. So if you enjoy my content and have yet to subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it if you would do so. And as always, thank you so much to everyone who already has. And if you want to support the channel even further, then consider donating to my Patreon. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.